Mm. Earliest memory of pantomime is uh, probably going back to when I was a kid and my mum used to put all the kids into the city varieties in Leeds for pantomimes. So occasionally I'd go and see that. And then uh, after that, I did, years later, Lewisham Concert Hall in Catford with all the people from On The Buses and uh, Amy MacDonald and people like that. And uh, that was my earliest. And all I did in that pantomime was carry the maypole on and off and be the weight at the bottom while they all danced around me. And just I little jobs like that. that was I probably uh, used my uh, catchphrase, I a kids! <laughs> was uh, probably my first proper pantomime as Billy Pierce, and that was at Wolverhampton Grand a hundred years ago, Grand Theatre in Wolverhampton, with uh, Max Boyce. Well, the list would be much uh, quicker to do, all the would be the people I don't want to work with, because everybody's been fantastic, really. But the names that spring to mind instantly, I've written a few down here, because first of all, John Inman, who's no longer with us, but he was such a lovely, kind man, and I did a couple of pantomimes with John and a summer season in Blackpool, and I loved him to pieces and I miss him to this day. And then we've got uh, John Chalice, Boise out of Fools and Horses, West Hill Pals, a, a man called Jan Eric who's got his own circus and I loved working with him because he's a proper circus performer and we did the slosh and all that and he used to mix it every day and their work ethic, circus people, is just amazing. And we're still pals now. Bless her, no longer with us, Linda Bellingham. She was such a lovely lady. She really was. Colleen Nolan and all the Nolans and Shane and all that could work, work with them and they've been absolutely brilliant. De definitely love to work there. Joe McKeldry. I mean, what a, what a joy Joe is. Such a lovely, lovely uh, lad and we're still pals to this day. And Chico, the wonderful Chico, he was marvellous. Um, to work with and great fun and a very hard working lad and also mustn't forget all the wonderful people the talented people that don't have uh, famous showbiz names um, so like the Jenny Gaynor I've worked with her loads of times Sarah Coggins lo loads of times Jay Worthy Those wonderful people that, uh, that uh, love pantomime and love working on stage and entertaining people and have a great energy those are the kinds of people that you want in your dream team Right, they say never work with children or animals and of course we have to do both in pantomime. We always have kids in pantomime every year but sometimes we have animals. Uh, in Jack and the Beanstalk, we had a proper cow, a real cow uh, and it's a Dexter which is an ancient British breed. I found all this out and they're uh, actually smaller than the cows but they're still massive. I mean when you stood next to one they're huge. But um, we called her Daisy which she had to do for pantomime but um, uh, she lived in a stable up Thornton Road and uh, for weeks before we actually started rehearsing and everything I had to go and get to know Daisy the cow and stand in the uh, stables with her and feed her bread and treats and things and talk to her so that she could get to know me and uh, my boys and uh, and come to trust me and me with her as well so we did get to know each other brilliantly in fact it got to the point where we were going for a pint each and I took her out for a meal one night and one day I woke up in bed with her but I don't think anything happened I think we were just a bit drunk but uh, anyway I love Daisy and I often wonder about her to this day but I, I'm sure she's out there in a field somewhere enjoying her retirement. One day the inevitable happened and I could see by Daisy's body language that um, she was about to dump her cargo. Well, I um, ran into the wings and couldn't find, obviously somebody had moved me, me brush and shovel, I couldn't, fi I couldn't find it anywhere. And while I was uh, running up and down backstage, Jan Eric, the circus guy, who was dressed as a uh, ringmaster with a top hat on, he had a top hat on, and I could hear 1,400 people in the audience, this massive roar come up and I ran on when I found the brush and shovel, but it took me a bit to find it, and I ran out with the brush and shovel in my hands, and in the meantime, the roar from the crowd was, Daisy's tail had come right up and she was doing a wee, and it was like a waterfall going, and Jan Eric, he'd taken his top hat off, and he caught the whole lot in his top hat. Didn't spill a drop. Well, of course, it, everybody loved it, and me running out late, think, thinking it was a pool, when it turned out to be a wee, it was hilarious, we couldn't do up for laughing after that. The Sunbeams are a long tradition here at the Alhambra Theatre in Bradford. Um, I suppose every pantomime always has kids in. It's very important because panto's about kids, but uh, the kids in the pantomime nowadays, uh, I love it because 
that it's such an important thing for them to be in it and loved and I like to make a fuss of the kids and we have a lovely uh, over the last few years I've had the honour to work with a lady called Sarah Packham who's got a little uh, dancing school in the uh, Yorkshire up in Hills above Keighley and um, she uh, the kids are just lovely they love I love them all they're absolutely brilliant and for me as long as they're a pantomime in Bradford they'll always be the sunbeams right what are the vital ingredients at the Alhambra Theatre uh, to make it a very good pantomime? Well, uh, I think energy has got to be, the right people in it, excitement, uh, the kids, the costumes, the lights. I mean, it's just... Uh, I think that the daft, really, just being as daft as you possibly can, that's the most important ingredient and work hard and what you've got to remember is that shows the first show that's the them people that are sat there they've never seen it before even if we've done 70 or 80 so you have to it does take 70 or 80 just to get it right though i have to say <laughs> right uh, for a number of years uh, my wife uh, kerry my wife kerry she, she was a dancer we met on the north pier uh, well well she was in a show and i went to see it and i met her afterwards and then kind of bu kept bumping into each other and then finished up working together and getting married and everything. But obviously we work, worked together then in pantomime. She's getting a bit old now, so she's had to retire. Um, she's got an allotment now and she, uh, yeah, she, do, you know, things like that. So um, she's, uh, she's a great, great dancer and I had the uh, joy and honour. But we did Robin Hood one year, right? And um, it was a lovely pantomime and um, my wife Kerry was in it, but also my little boy, uh, Jack, he was only little at the time, he was in it. My son from my first marriage, he was in it as well. So there was uh, four of us, me, Kerry, uh, Ricky and Jack, all on the stage at the same time. And in the finale, I used to have a right big lump in my throat because, um, I, I could, I, well, I tried to get my mother-in-law a job as a usherette so we could all be there. <laughs> but um, I used to say about my little boy, he used to stand in front of me in the finale where all the sunbeams are, and I'd, and I'd point to the audience and say, um, uh, that's, that's my son, that's mine, he's mine, he's mine. And then I'd say, he doesn't know yet. <laughs> he thinks I'm his uncle. Yeah, so uh, obviously to work with my wife and my family in the pantomime was a fabulous honour and a m wonderful opportunity and something that will remain with me till day I pop my clogs because it's a very, very wonderful experience. Thank you, Alhambra. Right, what is the scariest thing I've ever done in pantomime? Well, I've done all sorts. But I've done loads of scary things. I tap danced right across upside down on the cross. But that didn't bother me. I've been upside down, I've done... Um, Lots of uh, rope, I used to love doing that, when to swing on a big massive rope. So um, lots of things like that, but I'd have to say right up there amongst the top ones that I've ever been really actually frightened was last year. And they gave me a scooter, Vespa, like a Vespa scooter, and it was powered by batteries. So the batteries are in the back where the engine is. And um, it was so powerful that when you move the throttle, it was either on or off. There was no gradual. It didn't just gradually accelerate. It just went off like a rocket. So that thing used to terrify me every single night, uh, that scooter. And motorbikes and that, doing me and uh, they don't really mix. I had a terrible accident once when I was jumping 14 motorbikes in a double-decker bus and somebody rang the bell. Right, uh, we've had to miss Panto this year at the Alhambra, but... I've been invited back for 2021 on the back on the Alhambra stage yet again in my 22nd panto there. My so, panto world. Um, I've been going there now. Um, it's a bit of a double-edged sword, really, because when you've done so many pantos, you've got to try and think of new things, and it's very difficult to come up with new stuff, which is where Ed and uh, the team that I have around me, they'll suggest um, things, and w we rewrite it and turn it into our own. Um, so, uh, for me... The, the Alhambra, I love that the I love theatre anyway, but the Alhambra is very, very important to me because I've done so much there. I know all the staff, all the stage door, the back, backstage, the crew, the lighting fellas and all the usherettes and everybody. It's like one big family. So I'm very, very lucky and fortunate to be able to go there to the Alhambra. And very often, because I do love it so much and I don't want to sound like I'm being over gushing, I'm not over gushing, 
But as it happens, I do love the theatre. Lambra, standing on that stage, is um, it's and thinking about all the wonderful people that have been on that stage. And sometimes, between shows, when everybody's gone off for the dinners and there's nobody in, and it all goes quiet for about an hour, and all the usher and everybody's gone, and I'll go out and I'll stand on that stage in that empty theatre, and I, I promise you, I can feel that building breathing. I can feel the walls that are soaked in the applause and the laughter and the talent of the people that have gone before me. So that's what the Alhambra means to me. It's very, very important. It does, it means the world to me, the Alhambra. And uh, I, I thank the Alhambra for giving me the opportunity to, for it to become part of my life. I'm very grateful. Thank you, the Alhambra. I've been asked for my favourite joke. Well, I've got loads of favourite jokes, to be, be honest, but I'll do this, I'll do it as quick as I can. So one day, I'm, I'm travelling about, doing my acting and everything. I've been all over the world in this country. And uh, I was fed up one night, and it was blowing a gale, thunder, lightning. You know, it was 8.10 on the rectum scale. And I found this country pub miles from anywhere. And I... <coughs> excuse me. I just opened the window in influenza. And I found this country pub miles away from anywhere, and there's nobody in the car park with blowing a gale, thunder, lightning. And I went in the pub, the barman, he was very, very miserable. And I got myself a pint and all that. It was a lovely pub, there's nobody there, and it was boring. And I thought, well, I'll, I'll go in the games room and have a look, see if there's anybody in there. There might be some lads having a game of pool or something. So I went in the games room with my pint, couldn't believe all that were in there were two owls. Two owls having a game of pool, there were two owls. It must have been the night off. Well, anyway, one was a big, tall, very muscly owl, and the other one was a little, short, fat, bald owl. Well, I was watching these two owls having a game of pool, and it was the big owl shot, and he was aiming for a red striped ball in the top right-hand pocket. And as he leaned over the table to constipate on his shot, the little, short, fat, bald owl, he had a tattoo, by the way, he turned round to have a sip of his half a lager and a cheese and onion crisp, and while he weren't looking, you'll never guess what happened, that big, tall, muscly owl, do you know what he did? He moved a yellow striped ball with his wing about four inches. I couldn't believe my eyes, he went like that. Well, I couldn't resist, I said, excuse me, and the big, tall, muscly owl, he stood up, put his cue down and looked me straight in the face. He said, what? I said, well, that should be two its to him. He said, two its to who? That's my favorite joke. Mm.